Did you think you'd be having all this fun today? Uh, work harder than on a boat than you do with that full time job. Yeah. <laughs> a lot going on today. Yeah. Between signs and. You're working overtime. <laughs> Last time aboard Freedom, we arrived in Boating Paradise, aka Desolation Sound in beautiful British Columbia. After nearly 36 hours making our way from Seattle, we hunkered down in Squirrel Cove for a couple of days. This is a great spot on Cortez Island, not only because of the 70 degree water during the summer months, perfect for swimming, but also because of its close proximity to hiking and provisions, two things we absolutely needed. And since we've only got 16 days to cover as much ground as possible, we're now off to our next destination, the Octopus Islands. Not a bad way to start the day. Uh, oh, Razor Brad and Desolation Sound. So it's now 6.59, we are 12 seconds early. And I beat you to the helm this morning. Huh? I beat you to the helm. How do you figure? Well, I woke up an hour and a half ahead of you. I've been ready, waiting for you to finish your raisin bran. Well, I was on time, it's at six o'clock. Seven o'clock. I mean, seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, turn off the anchor alarm, clear out our tracks. Sean has the anchor pulled up just under the water line, and I'm pulling forward. Go to uh, neutral. Neutral. Turn the wheel to the right. We're trying to get some of that the mud. Right, turn to the left. The right. Turn, turn the wheel. To the right. So, yeah, okay. I'm going to the right. Uh, go to reverse. Go to like 1200. 1200. We're trying to get the mud off the anchor without wasting too much of our water. So although we are making water, Um, if we don't have to waste it all on our anchor, that's a good thing. Okay. And it's always nice when we don't have a ton of boats around us in an anchorage, so we can kind of maneuver and, uh, right now I'm going in reverse at 1200 RPM to get all of the mud off.
Today's passage to the Octopus Islands is a short one at only 23 nautical miles from Squirrel Cove. We're leaving at a very specific time this morning so we can enter the Hole in the Wall channel at just the right time so that we can exit through the Hole in the Wall rapids during slack tide and avoid the strong tidal currents that rip through this area. One thing to know about boating in this part of the world is that there are some of the strongest tides and currents in the Northern Hemisphere due to the complex labyrinth of islands and narrow channels situated at the base of British Columbia's largest mountains. and we are pulling up uh, close to the hole in the wall and we've got some time to kill. We've got a little over an hour before slack so we're just gonna kind of hang out here. There's a few other boats up ahead doing the same, just waiting for a slack because right now it's ripping through at nine knots. So we definitely don't want to enter early. So we're just gonna chill out and wait and just take in the beautiful sights. While the surges in water through the channels and around the islands help to circulate oxygen and nutrients that in turn allow marine life to flourish, they're definitely not something you want to get caught up in, especially if you're in a slow cruising trawler. So we've planned the route carefully to make sure we have a safe and relaxing morning on the water. Once we exited the Hole in the Wall Rapids, we were almost at the Octopus Islands Marine Provincial Park, the home to one of the area's largest and most scenic anchorages. The rocky entrance into Wyatt Bay, when coming from the north, is narrow and shallow, so we entered nice and slowly, admiring the rocky shoreline and the many nooks and crannies that make this spot such a popular destination for cruisers. We actually first learned of the Octopus Islands simply by looking at a map on Navionics. The area looked visually interesting and it was also flagged as an anchorage. It had reasonable depths of 100 feet or less and had good online reviews. So once we asked around and kept hearing only good things from other cruisers, we decided to give it a whirl. Who's ready for a birthday party? Who's ready, Sal? So? Sal, so, it's your birthday, buddy. It's your birthday. Do you wanna do the honors? Do you wanna get his birthday hat? There they are. From last year. Sal. <laughs> Sal, so? so, you're ready. Oh my gosh. Buddy, it's your birthday. No, it's cute. Oh my god, and it matches your rash card, buddy. Oh my goodness. Happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> Happy birthday. You want a treat? So, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Yeah, we might have forgotten to mention that it's Mr. Sully's 10th birthday. Yep, Miss Martha's handsome BFF is officially double digits, so of course we had to celebrate his special day with hats and treats and his favorite activity, exploring new places on the dinghy, aka Captain Sully's ship. We 
are going exploring for Solster's birthday. Sean, are you ready to go exploring? I have never been more ready. Exactly. Never been more excited either. Little, little boy only turns 10 once, so we are gonna, hopefully. Oh my gosh. Who's ready to go? Oh my goodness. Before we came here, we did some quick research and learned that one, there's a great hike to a lake somewhere over there. And two, there's a really popular cabin that's a must see if you wanna make a little history in the Octopus Islands. As we approached the beach to access the hike and where we thought the cabin might be, we quickly realized that we might not have come prepared. The shoreline isn't great for landing a dinghy and it's quite muddy and rocky. If only we had read on a little more to see all of the reviews that suggested wearing boots or coming via a paddleboard. Live and learn, I guess. You feel good about where it's anchored? <laughs> Soupy. Yeah, it's a little soupy. Not the greatest okay. beach for dinging, but no. you know, it'll do. So we're not even at the right island. This isn't where the cabin is now. Oh. This trail goes to Newton Lake. That's an hour each way. Yeah. So should we just go back? Go to the cabin? Well, yeah, at least just get off this beach so we're not left here, sure. stranded. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe go to Octopus, wherever Octopus Island is. So with the tide coming up another six feet, which will make our trek back to the dinghy more difficult with our current shoe situation, and the trail being two hours round trip to the lake, we decided to scrap the hike and continue exploring to find this cabin that everyone speaks so highly of. Okay, should I just like... Should I just do the dive? Whee! If you're looking for the cabin, this is the wrong island. So we're gonna go in search of the cabin. That wasn't as bad as the other place. Okay, guys, hold on. We found the cabin, and it's no wonder why boaters make a point to visit this spot when they're passing through. This old fisherman's cabin has become more of an art gallery, featuring only the finest driftwood creations made by boaters who've come to visit the island over the years. It's customary for boaters to put their vessel's name on a piece of wood and leave it in the cabin for future visitors to admire. funky little place offering up a really fun way to leave a memory of your boat behind before continuing on your travels. So, is this the most exciting birthday ever? 
and thankfully there's no shortage of driftwood to choose from if you're in the mood for a little arts and crafts. Found one, Sean? That looks good. Is the other side? Yeah. It's got a unique flair. What do you think? Should we go and do some arts and crafts? Okay, we got our wood. We're gonna head back to Freedom and make up our plaque. How's that sound, Martha? Don't you go anywhere, you hear? Dry quickly. While we waited for the wood to dry before turning it into fine art, Sean tackled another more pressing project of the day, fixing the exhaust stack mounts that broke on our way here. A lot of folks ask us why Freedom has a tall mast, and this is why, to support the exhaust pipe that's mounted to it via metal hose clamps and thick rubber blocks. However, like a lot of things on boats, the attachments fail over time and require immediate attention. How's it going? Good, got all the old rubber mounts out. We got the... These are the mounts? No. Oh. That bag, need these. Oh yeah, the like bracket and the mount. This is the bracket and this is a little rubber. So I gotta put it in the blocks on the uh, mast and then drill the holes and mount these. Um, well, so you're like halfway through that workload? Yeah. Yeah, once I get these up, then I'm almost free. Did you think you'd be having all this fun today? Harder than on a boat than you do with that full time job. Yeah. <laughs> a lot going on today. Yeah. Between signs and. You're working overtime. <laughs> this is now the third time Sean's had to replace these, and luckily for us, he had spare parts on hand just in case the replacements failed. Once Sean wrapped up the exhaust project, we were ready to get back to arts and crafts. Luckily, Sean got the wood in time before the tide washed it away. Okay, put the finishing touches on the wood. Yeah, I'll see if this works. We're gonna make MV Freedom out of wire in red, white, and blue, which is appropriate for this time of year. Um, how about, yeah, free, free will be here and then dumb there. So maybe a little more right like there, yeah.
is what you get when you have a handy husband. All these cool ideas. Did you get an A in arts and crafts? You did. Last and hardest part of this project was actually finding an open space to hang our first piece of freedom art. With so many others who've come before us, we didn't want to steal any good spots or cover up anyone else's masterpiece. But eventually, we found the perfect place to leave our mark here on Octopus Island. Making history. Sean, what do you have to say for yourself? Looks good. Time for a shower and dinner. You're a damn genius is what <laughs> I have to say for that. I think it's the best sign here. I think so too. I don't <laughs> think anybody painted theirs. <laughs> Whew, what a day. for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you won't miss next time when we explore farther north for an epic bucket list experience. We'll see you next time!